everyone, welcome back to my blog. The last three parts here of Epictetus, they're all part of the same um, little lesson that I've saved till last. I haven't read it, I'm not sure what he's got to say about it, but it's about freedom. Part one, he is free who lives as he wishes to live, who is neither subject to compulsion, nor to hindrance, nor to force, whose movements to action are not impeded, whose desires attain their purpose, and who does not fall into that which he would avoid. Who then chooses to live in error? No man. Who chooses to live deceived, liable to mistake, unjust, unrestrained, discontented, mean? No man. Not one, then, of the bad lives as he wishes, nor is he then free. And who chooses to live in sorrow, fear, envy, pity, desiring and failing in his desires, attempting to avoid something and falling into it? Not one. Do we then find any of the bad free from sorrow, free from fear, who does not fall into that which he would avoid, and does not obtain that which he wishes? Not one, nor then do we find any bad man free. Further then, answer me this question also. Does freedom seem to you to be something great and noble and valuable? How should it not seem so? Is it possible, then, when a man obtains anything so great and valuable and noble, to be mean? It is not possible. When, then, you see any man subject to another, or flattering him contrary to his own opinion, confidently affirm that this man also is not free, and not only if he do this for a bit of supper, but also if he does it for a government or a consulship. And, and call these men little slaves who, for the sake of little matters, do these things. And those who do so for the sake of great things call great slaves, as they deserve to be. This is admitted also. Do you think that freedom is a thing independent and self-governing? Certainly. Whomsoever then it is in the power of another to hinder and compel, declare that he is not free. And do not look, I entreat you, after his grandfathers and great-grandfathers, or inquire about his being bought or sold. But if you hear him saying from his heart and with feeling, Master, even if the twelve faces precede him, call him a slave. And if you hear him say, Wretch that I am, how much I suffer, call him a slave. If finally you see him lamenting, complaining, unhappy, call him a slave though he wears a pretexta. If then he is doing nothing of this kind, do not yet say that he is free, but learn his opinions, whether they are subject to compulsion, or may produce hindrance, or to bad fortune. And if you find him such, call him a slave who has a holiday, a holiday in the Saturnalia. Say that his master is from home. He will return soon, and you will know what he suffers. What then is that which makes a man free from hindrance, and makes him his own master? For wealth does not do it, nor consulship, nor provincial government, nor royal power, but something else must be discovered. What then is that which, when we write, makes us free from hindrance and unimpeded? The knowledge of the art of writing. What then is it in playing the lute? The science of playing the lute. Therefore, in life also, it is the science of life. You have then heard in a general way, but examine the thing also in the several parts. Is it possible that he who desires any of the things which depend on others can be free from hindrance? No. Is it possible for him to be unimpeded? No. Therefore, he cannot be free. Consider then whether we have nothing which is in our own power only, or whether we have all things, or whether some things are in our power and others in the power of others. What do you mean? When you wish the body to be entire, sound, is it in your power or not? It is not in my power, when you wish it to be healthy. Neither is this in my power, when you wish it to be handsome, nor is this. Life or death, neither is this in my power. Your body then is another's, subject to every man who is stronger than yourself. It is. But your estate, is it in your power to have it when you please, and as long as you please, and such as you please? No. And your slaves? No. And your clothes? No. And your house? No. And your horses? Not one of these things. 
And if you wish by all means your children to live, or your wife, or your brother, or your friends, is it in your power? This also is not in my power. And that's the end of part one. It's a pretty odd concept of freedom. We'll find out more in the next two parts. But, <clears throat> looking at it the way he does, unless some other things get cleared up in the next two parts, the word freedom would have no meaning because we're subject to conditions for everything. So anyway, we'll find out more tomorrow and conclude on Saturday. Make it a great day, and bye for now.